length of tree okay and the one that gives you the least error should be chosen but then you can also prune the tree which is an automated way of, okay so before that we'll also plot what we have built right so how do you plot it so we just write plot and we uh, provide uh, this uh, you know the variable that where we have uh, you know saved the summary statistics and we also use the text and this syntax okay so this this is the syntax for you know plotting the all right so this is the tree that you can look in front of me that's exactly how we also uh, you know learned in the slide for the first time so that's exactly how you can actually beautify it there are many packages you can use to beautify your model because if you're using for publication and such thing you cannot use such such a uh, you know uh, picture you rather uh, use some something fancy or something better looking all right the next thing to do is pruning the data, uh, pruning the tree and uh, we'll use a cv dot tree function in order to prune the tree and that's what normally uh, is used in this case um, so we'll just use the so this is for cross validation so this is cross validation uh, dot tree uh, and we have provided uh, the uh, variable that has uh, the summary statistics and we can also plot it okay so let's plot and let's see at what point you have got the list uh, or the best sort of best uh, predictive model okay Predict best predictions okay so best prediction is nothing but least deviance or least mean square error i think it gives deviance yes so in the uh, y axis you have got the cross validated deviance and in the x axis we have got the size of the model okay size means number of uh, number of trees right <coughs> number of uh, nodes that you have so first if you do the first split you have got uh, you know the highest deviance right so that's bad and as you go on it is actually going down but many times you will you will see if you go down the deviance will go down but it will certainly go up again okay so in that case you would be choosing the case you would be choosing um, you know let me show you that is better so many times this picture will look like something like this okay so you once you go in for case uh, you know the tree length exactly where the minimum is okay this is like minimizing the cost function something similar okay so deviant should be the minimum okay. so here in this case it is constantly going down so we'll just use 8 as our optimal uh, sort of value so we'll just prune uh, the tree by taking the best as 8 so this is the syntax of pruning so prune dot fit. I'm just uh, assigning this uh, variable uh, by using prune dot tree function, and uh, I'm providing uh, the uh, decision tree uh, statistics to it, summary statistics, and also providing um, the number of uh, or the length or the size uh, of the tree that that should ideally be considered as uh, optimal. Okay. All right. Now let's do that. Okay. Now you can also use summary of this. Okay. Prune dot fit. Don't change much because we have provided eight as the terminal load, so it's going to remain same. You know, had it been less, you know, looking at the diagram that I showed you, right? Or this diagram. Had it been somewhere here, you know, if you use 5, probably it's going to change. Okay, let's change it to 5 and let's see whether uh, there is any change. Yeah. So, you can see the number of terminal holes is 5 so that's what you provide right as one of the argument when you prune your uh, decision tree okay now we can also 
plot it yes so now it's changed right previously it was much bigger now it is much smaller right whether it's it has actually increased your uh, you know model or not we'll just see by looking at the test error okay so because this is where we work only working with the training data right but what matters to us is the error rate in the test data and we can use the you know the remaining 25% because we have taken 75% as the training data 25% we can just take it out and use this uh, you know this tree you know to predict data over there and look at the test error and then decide uh, which one is the uh, better the original uh, model or the model after uh, you know pruning or by just cutting down few few of these nodes so how do we predict? So you can use, use the predict function. You I have shown it to in, in any other videos also. You can use predict function, provide the uh, you know um, the summary statistics, and then provide the data. We are using test data, which is 25% uh, of the data that we didn't take in the training data. Uh, training data. So that's your test data. It's completely new. Okay, and when you run this, you will get. Uh, this is the predicted value of the uh, house prices for different observations in our data. Now, using this data, you just have to compare it with uh, the actual data. So, what you need to do is that take the actual data, and this is the predicted data. Um, you take uh, the uh, difference, which is uh, the error found in each one of these observations, which could be positive or negative. Uh, you know take the mean square error of that you know square them and take the mean of that so root, take the root mean square error of that and see if it has actually um, uh, is actually good enough or not okay and uh, one of the uh, important thing to note here is that you can build several of these decision trees and see which one is giving you the uh, the lowest uh, mean square error and that's the one to be um, that's the one to be used as the final model. Thank you so much.